Uh, the other co chair of you know, Faith, Power, and Light with Bruce, who's also with us. And um, we're excited to start this first of a quarterly conversation gathering. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Um, I, I think this will give us an opportunity to um, both share what IPL is doing, but also, you know, have a chance to have a conversation about needs and, and things coming up. And I'm Ruth Striegel. I'm co-chair with Anne, and I'm really excited to see so many people on this call. This is a wonderful beginning for our quarterly conversation. So thank you for coming. Thanks, Ruth and Anne, who are our co-chairs. And there may be some other people popping on as we go along. Some folks couldn't make it, so that's why I'm recording, and I hope that's okay with everyone. And we are just very pleased to open this um, event. Um, we're starting these quarterly kind of uh, conversations that are supposed to have some inspirational aspect, tell what we're doing, and, and maybe have some other input um, according to what you all, the part of the community, would like. But we're starting tonight uh, with Lisa Lehigh, who I'm just so pleased that we're connecting with her and she's gonna be helping IPL. I worked a new, new or uh, Lisa's mother, Joan, a number of years ago and worked with her. And Lisa is a nurse um, working with students at UNM and she's going through a, a chapel, eco chaplaincy program with Upaya. And so Lisa, we're so pleased to have you and I'm just gonna turn it on over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me at this meeting. <laughs> um, so what um, what I was brought on to kind of talk about um, and share is um, the sustainability of our own activism and um, and what feeds that. And so um, I come from a contemplative tradition, a meditation tradition. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Zen Buddhist. I'm a practicing Zen Buddhist. I was raised Catholic, um, but um, but have been practicing Zen for the last um, you know 28 years. And um, and I'm in this uh, chaplaincy program um, with Upaya, and so. Um, this is kind of a new idea. What is eco chaplaincy? And one of the things that kind of really kind of came to my heart is just what, how are we sustaining ourselves in our work and our activism? What's our inner eco climate, you know? Um, because there's very little difference. We are, we are made of all the elements, right? So, uh, it's the same elements as this earth, this beautiful earth. And so touching on that and kind of um, resource, resourcing ourselves with that. So um, I, I'd like to share a little bit. Of, um, I'm right, reading right now um, Zen and the Art of Saving the Planet by Tet Nhat Hanh, who you all might be familiar with. He was a Vietnamese monk who died recently, um, but he was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize by Martin Luther King Jr. from his um, nonviolent activism. And he, um, in the 60s, coined this, um, uh, what's called engaged Buddhism. But really, you know, what is engaged activism, whether it comes from a religious tradition, um, a spiritual um, calling or a humanistic desire, what is being in, engaged activist and how is that sustained? So if you don't mind, I'd like to read something and we'll do a short um, meditation and then have a little conversation after. So, um, so in the 1960s, in the 1960s um, of course, we were in the midst of the Vietnam War and um, uh, this monk, Tet Nhat Hanh, was living in Vietnam. And so he says, to meditate is to be aware of what was going on. And what was going on at that time was suffering and the destruction of life. 
Once you know what's going on, you're motivated by a desire to do something to relieve the suffering, both in you and around you. And so we had to find a way to practice mindful breathing and to do walking meditation while helping those wounded by the bombs. Because if you don't maintain a spiritual practice during the time you serve, you will lose yourself in burnout. And so we learned to breathe, to walk, to release the tension so we could keep going. These are the origins of engaged Buddhism, but you could substitute Buddhism with anything, um, whatever faith tradition you might be or non-tradition. So it was born in a difficult situation where we wanted to maintain our practice while responding to suffering. And so with that, because you were all responding to suffering, I was thinking we could just um, sit and do a short contemplative practice, meditation of grounding and um, go from there. So um, however you feel comfortable, if just make yourself comfortable. You can either um, sit in a chair, um, with it, whether you're sitting on the ground, you can even lay on the floor. Just whatever you do, if you could um, bring both feet to contact the ground, your seat on the ground, your back on the ground. And if you feel more comfortable turning off your video, that's fine. You can leave it on either way. Just want to get comfortable position in your chair. You might even want to bring your shoulders up to your ears and then with an exhale, let them drop. Put your hands in your lap or on your knees, wherever you're comfortable. You can leave your eyes open or closed. And just begin to feel the breath. Come into the body. And then noticing it leaving the body. Breathing in, breathing out. Feeling the support of the earth beneath you, allowing yourself to be held by this support. And breathing. may notice some tension in the body. You might notice some relaxation in the body. If you have a tense area, you can bring the breath there. If it's too much, you can bring it to a more neutral or relaxed part of the body. This is just an opportunity to just be, to let the earth support us, to notice how the breath enters and leaves the body without much of any work at all. It just, just keeps working. The breath comes in. And it goes out. Yeah. 
And as the breath comes in and out, I'd like to read some statements of loving kindness that we can give ourselves this nutriment. May I be peaceful in light, in my body, and in my mind. May I be safe and free from accidents. May I be free from unwholesome states of mind, fear, and worries. May I know how to look at myself with the eyes of understanding and compassion. May I be able to recognize and touch the seeds of joy and happiness in me. May I learn how to nourish myself with joy each day. May I be able to live fresh, solid, and free. May I not fall into a state of indifference or be caught in the extremes of attachment and aversion. Again, feeling that support from the earth. And this beautiful breath that works whether we know it's happening or not. And then you may start to notice and start feeling into your environment. If your eyes have been closed, you can open them. And just notice what's around you. And if you had some stillness at this moment while we did this practice, to cherish that and bring it into the meeting. Thank you. So, um, it was a very short little taste. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, you know, if there was anything that came up for any of you related to our world, our climate, to yourself and your your service work um, during the meditation or after, and if you'd like to share. Lisa, thank you. I, I was wonderful and I what touched me was the to I can't quite remember the words but to um comfort or 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 find joy in each day and um as as we're discussing it can get pretty heavy <laughs> at times and and um, feeling the weight of what's going on and that's just such an important piece to and I, I really um, uh, resonated with saying oh yeah each day some joy I love that thank you yeah Ella Joan Thank you, Lisa. Just as Anne, I felt a sense of well-being in all of these people here and all of their energy and focused on the environment and where we go from here and the work there is to do. I was 
Relieved isn't quite the word. Let's see. I was assured and at peace about where we go from here. And I thank you so very much for this, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am Odile. Thank you for leading this time of contemplation. And uh, I felt also this time of uh, relaxation, peace, and just to feel that uh, we are here. You know, we have we are our being, but we are not alone. Of course, we have uh, among community of other beings. But in the same time, during this uh, meditation, I could not help to think about what we have today. This uh, report from the IPCC, you know, the climate change. How the this document is so uh, difficult to to to. to to read because it's a real the reality of today and, and we know it's a very difficult reality we are facing. But uh, in the same time, these moments are so important to ground us, you know, in our uh, work and, you know, uh, to have this time, of course, of every day, uh, you know, to get to, to get some energy to continue our, our journey of activism, and whatever we are doing. So thank you. Thank you. If I may, I, you know, what you bring up is really important. I think often we're, we're called to, we're kind of on the precipice often, right? In, in our work, especially if you know something that's happening and you're reading these reports and um, there can feel like this chasm or deficit. And so all for all the more reason, like you said, to kind of um, to ground because that helps us, I think, go forward and to respond. Yeah, and without, and feeling together, yeah, so there's less despair. So thank you. Um, if it's okay, I also wanted to, to add, hi Lisa, thank you hi. so much for that. Uh, my name is Arcelia, I'm also on the board with uh, IPL, and something that uh, came up when, um, like during the meditation was when you said to, um, sorry if I'm paraphrasing, but it was to not exist in the extremes of attachment or detachment. And I kind of had this realization that in this line of work, sometimes you have to exist kind of in both in order to just get the work done. Um, so that was something that came up for me. And also, I, I don't know at what point, but there was the word rejoice too. And I feel like it's kind of to do with the space that we're in right now. So thank you again. Thank you. I appreciated the idea that the earth was supporting me. Even though there's several layers of um, building materials between me and the earth. <laughs> But that I found that very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Marlene? Oh, you're on mute, Marlene. Thank you, Ruth. I felt the same thing. I'm saying, where do I find uh, the earth sustaining me? And I found myself in a cave, you know, like an embryo. Um, and the thought came that you know, you're white. <laughs> We are not in the um, the storm of uh, poverty, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we enter into the suffering that we are in solidarity with? And I think the most important thing is that we do have to continue with the zest of life and a commitment um, 
to go on, to, to have a, a, a hope um, because we don't enter into the struggle because we're going to have an answer and everything's going to come. We enter into the struggle because we're entangled and we're mm -hmm. one and we will do what best we can. But I do think um, one of the uh, concepts was, you know, help me think correctly. That's beautiful. Thank you. Rosemary? Yes, I almost forgot the timing of this uh, session. And so I frantically about the latest report on climate change and how we're at our tipping point, et, et cetera. And I had that that frantic, useless energy of anxiety and panic that I always get when I hear news like that, which doesn't energize me to act, but just energizes me to sort of freak out. And I am so glad that I remembered just as I had got to that point in the news, oh yes, I'm not supposed to be watching the news at six o'clock tonight. <laughs> I am supposed to be participating in a meditation and then discussion on environmental concerns here in New Mexico. And so I came in just at the start of your, of your uh, meditation and didn't lose my energy but lost my panic. Mm -hmm. And I feel now like my energy is of more use to me in the world than it was while I was listening to the climate news on the six o'clock news. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So Lisa, I wanted to thank you too. This is just wonderful kind of a focus foundation for our work and bringing us back to that still point of our heart work. And so um, we do have some other things to share, but if you'd like to just uh, share something in closing this part and just so grateful, I just feel ah, in a new place. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just thank you all. And I just feel like um, you are all full of wisdom and just everything that every each and every one of you said was just beautiful and um yeah and how can we be with you know we have to be with ourselves to be with with others and and as times get tough um to resource ourselves so um you know anytime you need any assistance in resourcing we could do something longer or, you know or do a, 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 a you know some some sharing some support group type stuff if interested so i'm just putting that out there and thank you very much for um letting me join in on this meeting thank you so much lisa and um so lisa was um introducing something that we're going to be talking about in a minute is just another offering that we might have for anyone that's interested every month but um i wanted to just affirm this kind of uh, being together in that spirit place because what we're about as we live into climate change it's not a project it's not a campaign it's not a current event it's our lives and the lives of the future and uh, we are called to um, walk through and walk with this and offer for others hope and um, walking together and I think that can only happen with a deep spiritual foundation, whatever tradition that is in whatever form. And that's one of the things that um, IPL um, does. And um, I like this quote from uh, Teilhard that says, the day will come after harvest harnessing the winds, the tides and gravitation, we shall harness for God the energies of love. 
And on that day, for the second time in the history of the world, humans will have discovered fire. So while we work on new forms of renewable energy and all, and we need to do that, we're also um, working on the energies of love in whatever traditions we're part of and putting that out into the world and that infusing um, our lives. So I'd like to just share now a little bit about what IPL is doing, but several of you mentioned the IPCC report. And actually I was going to show one graph from that report. And I'm just going to show it real quickly, and it's not to depress us, but uh, because there's an element of a hope in it, I think. And I have to find it here first. Um, so just one second. Okay. All right. Okay. So I wanted to just show this one graph. And, um, you know, I... I um, in the IPL uh, news notes, I'll send out a, a link for everybody to the whole report, which is 36 pages. This is not the graph I wanted to show you, but it does show the adverse effects of different elements um, in our earth, whether it's water or food or heat. And um, But the graph I wanted to show you was this one, which um, shows to the extent um, Current and future generations will experience a hotter and different world, and it depends on our choices now and into the near future. And I wanted to show it. You can probably find maybe yourself on this graph somewhere. But why I wanted to show you is because the while we're in climate change, it's going to be if we respond and act now within this uh, window that we have. This very low bar here will show the lesser effects for our brothers and sisters, for the diverse um, creatures, for our water, for our food, for the planet. And um, that's why I wanted to show you this, because this is where we want to imagine, where we want to pray, where we want to dream, and what we want to act for. And then, of course, we have the other realities if we sort of continue as we are moving now. But there is this possibility to move here. And I think prayer meditation is a big part of that as well. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing that. And I just want to share a little bit about um, some of the things that IPL is involved in. I might call on a few people that are on here um, tonight. And so I'm just going to go through a few of these and then um, have opportunity for you to offer some thoughts or things that you think that would be good for um, IPL maybe to do that would be helpful. And then I'm closing with a very short um, um, reflection by uh, Joanna Macy, who is also a Buddhist. We're on the Buddhist thing tonight. Um, and uh, this is on from her work uh, that reconnects. And it's a it'll be at the end. So it's a, a, a wonderful inspiration, I think. So just to share with uh, some of you that maybe aren't quite so familiar, IPL, we work here in New Mexico and on the border in El Paso. And Odile, who is on tonight, works as an organizer down there in El Paso and Southern New Mexico and works with a lot of uh, congregational outreach in uh, that region down there. Um, and then Carlos, who is not on tonight, um, does a wonderful website that we have. And if you haven't gone to visit there, do. And there's calendar. So we try to, he tries to keep up. And if you're not on our social media, we have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. And a lot of things come out on that as well. <clears throat> so we do a lot of outreach, um, speaking to congregations, uh, doing some writing, presentations here in New Mexico, but also nationally. And then we also work heavily in the Permian Basin, which is in Southeast New Mexico. And that is where Stacy is living in Artesia there. Um, and so we're so happy she's with us tonight. And we work closely with um, a young organizer, Kaylee Shoup, with Citizens Caring for the Future. IPL helps start Citizens Caring for the Future with some faith leaders down in that region who are concerned about air quality, and health and also care of creation. 
And uh, we do a number of things with that. We uh, take part in comments for leasing. Um, we connect with the BLM or the Bureau of Land Management. We worked heavily to get methane rules in the region uh, because methane affects health, but also climate change. And have been working on the nationally, the EPA methane rules. We also have um, several times a year, immersion retreat experiences where we take people of faith and faith leaders to the Permian to, and we start at Carlsbad Caverns to see the beauty of God's creation underneath, um, underneath the earth or within the earth. And then we um, visit with the frontline community members. We talk, we have prayers of healing on the land and uh, we all commit to stronger action. So we really have three prongs of of, of work in IPL. One is education, inspiration. So I'm going to talk about a few things with that first. So Lisa mentioned this uh, spiritual grounding for climate activism through the Buddhist tradition. And um, if any of you are interested in doing this or having a monthly kind of gathering where it's meditation maybe and sharing um, just for renewal, um, please just um, email us and I will put it out in our um, news notes as well as an invitation for anybody that would like to do that. And Lisa is very happy to lead us in different ways with that. Um, I have Arcelia on here tonight, I think still. Arcelia, if you want to mention braiding sweetgrass that we're going to be doing, we're also trying to do more outreach with young, young adults. Um, and this is an idea that came forth. And so Arcelia is kind of spearheading this. Yeah, thank you, Joan. Um, and yes, I uh, have been a little bit on the behind the scenes, so uh, feel free, uh, Anne, to jump in. Um, but yes, we're having conversations and using Braiding Sweetgrass, which is a really great book uh, written by Robin Wall Kimmerer on the connection of, you know, our um, on the earth, basically, and just kind of going through um, her stages of life and reflecting on the stages of life and the environmental movement. Um, and it's it's just a very um, a very a very thoughtful book. I remember when I read it that I had to kind of pause after every chapter and just take times to to debrief and think through and reevaluate my whole life a little bit. Um, but we we're thinking of having some conversations um, with using the book as a guidance. And then she's also going to be um, speaking on Earth Day at um, one of the centers. I'm very sorry, I don't remember off the top yeah. of my head. The Pueblo <laughs> Cultural Center here in Albuquerque, but you Thank have to you. get on a wait list now. <laughs> yes, yeah. So they're sold out, but we're we should still um, be registering and in, in hopes that they do a hybrid um, so that we can all just hear her speak because it would be just so very impactful, I'm sure. Um, but yes, that's the the overview. Um, feel free to jump in, and if I miss anything. Hmm. That's great, Arcelia. You covered it. Yeah, thank you. You'll hear more about that. So that'll be coming out. So watch for that. And then speaking of Earth Day on April 21st, um, Ruth's uh, uh, congregation, First Congregational Church here in Albuquerque, is going to be sponsoring Emma's Revolution. And uh, do you want to say just a word about that, Ruth? We are so excited that Emma's Revolution is coming to Albuquerque and, and that we get to host them. Um, if you don't know them, they it's a duo, Pat Humphreys and Sandy Apatow, and they they sing in the tradition of Pete Seeger. Pat was a friend of Pete Seeger's. Um, they have wonderful social justice music, environmentally informed, um, and we are going to be putting that information up on the IPL website pretty darn soon because I think the promotional materials are going to be in my inbox anytime now. Um, so it's going to be Friday, April 21st at 7 p.m. And we are selling tickets. It's going to be a fundraiser. Um, our church supports um, several immigrants from Honduras who live in our basement, as well as some other families. Um, so we, we're selling tickets to support them. And all that will be information on the website coming up really soon. Thanks, Ruth. And um, IPL is co-sponsoring that because we see a, a real connection um, that continues to grow with uh, immigrants, refugees from other countries, and climate change. Um, another program that we're thinking about 
And this would mean um, um, folks out there um, forming little groups that might be interested in Celtic spirituality program. And this is a program that um, IPL could uh, buy into and purchase. And we would be looking at, you know, up to eight groups in um, House of Worship or somewhere um, who would like to meet and use these. And there'll be 12 of them. They've already started this, but uh, once we buy into it, um, we can use those for a long time. Um, but it would have to be just one person in the group who would facilitate and coordinate that. So I'm looking for, if you're interested in this, just again, email me and let me know. Some of the topics are Celtic friendship, communities, mystics, creativity, landscape, streams, pilgrimage, uh, feminine, imagination, prayer, and they ha all have different speakers for that. So that's just an FYI shout out. And then um, in the future, we probably will be having some kind of a young adult retreat. Um, so if you know of young adults that might be interested, just please let us know. The other area, the second area we work in is um, actually hand, what I call hands-on. So we have a cool congregations committee, which has been doing great work. And it's some professionals, some men, mostly men professionals, who have, are engineers. So um, Bruce Hun, um, David Roberts, Michael Prine, who is on here tonight, uh, Mazir Saleh, who is on also, and Bob Bush. And I just want to share with you some of the congregations that they've been working with on energy efficiency or energy assessments, and then the congregations would do the efficiency. And we also have about 30 houses of worship, at least, or not more, who have uh, put solar on. Um, with the Inflation Reduction Act, there's going to be more incentives and for houses of worship and nonprofits for solar. And that's happened because IPL in the states and nationally worked really hard over a number of years to um, come up with something that could help um, nonprofits and houses of worship. So um, energy assessments right now that just in 2023 that have been done or are on in process are first congregational in Albuquerque, their assessment was completed. Uh, first Presbyterian in Santa Fe, they're almost finished with their energy assessment. St. Andrew Presbyterian in Albuquerque is in process. First Unitarian Church in Las Cruces, they have to pay for theirs. Otherwise, they're free, but they're a little too far south. We're looking for volunteers down there who might be able to do this. And then we have a bunch on the wait list. Uh, St. John the 23rd here in Albuquerque, Albuquerque Mennonite Church, St. James Episcopal Church in Taos is on our wait list. And then a New Life Presbyterian here in Albuquerque is on the wait list. The other area of um, hands-on that we have is a, a Sacred Lands and Water Committee that meets the second Thursday at noon. Also, the Cool Congregation meets the second Monday at four. Anybody can join that one. And the same Sacred Lands and Water. And um, some of you that jumped on early heard um, Ann ask about um, any of the little seedlings that we're distributing right now. <laughs> And are there any left and what do we need to do with those? We started that project with uh, through the Sikh community because they wanted to plant 550 trees to honor uh, the founder of their um, religious tradition. And we're almost there. And so we thought we should just do this interfaith wise. So um, through this interfaith forest of bliss, we have planted hundreds and hundreds of trees, some purchased, um, some at gardens, at uh, public um, parks, um, uh, you know, Real Grande Farm, other places. Some of the trees have gone to Las Cruces and Santa Fe and um, all over the state. And actually, I'm taking a few down to the southeast when I head out tomorrow to some people in uh, Roswell and also in Carlsbad. Stacy, I do have some extra trees. If you need any, let me know. They're all drought tolerant and they're just little seedlings. Um, so I'd like to, uh, we're, the Sacred Land and Waters also does some other things, um, like we've worked with Sister Rosemary, who's on here tonight, and the Little Sisters of the Poor to do a project out there, um, growing soil and food production, and we've worked with uh, James and Joy Skeet, and James is a Navajo man, and he is at Covenant Pathways Ministry and Spirit Farm out by Rama. 
So I'd like, Anne, if you're still there, are you still there, Anne? Yeah, and if you wanna jump in and talk about the April 15th workshop that's here in Albuquerque. Thank you, Joan. The, so James and Joyce Skeet um, are going to come over from, they live in Vanderwagen, south of Gallup and to share their knowledge and practical wisdom about composting, um, healthy soils, healthy gut, how it relates our, in, our, in our internal systems to, to eating from healthy soils. Um, we're gonna do a little bit on rainwater harvesting and, um, and possibly some planting. So it's a workshop with, um, with them uh, and we're going to do it at the East Central Ministries on Vermont, 123 Vermont Northeast, uh, to support the work of that whole foundation and, and all that they do in terms of outreach and support in the International District. And so pretty excited that that's worked out to have that uh, workshop there. And it's the registration's free. Um, but you need to register and we're providing lunch. Um, we're working with East Central Ministries to identify someone hopefully in their community who'd like to provide lunch. And so it's a $10 donation if you can do that for lunch. Um, and so inside will be in the morning. I mean, we'll be inside uh, getting some teachings and presentations by the skeets and, and the afternoon will be hands-on. Um, so if you're interested, that information's on the website and um, pretty excited to, to pull this together. And it's one of our Earth Day events on April 15th. Thanks, Anne. And what's great about this, it's sort of an integral ecology event so that we will have um, a, a, a ritual prayer um, at noon before we eat that James is going to lead. And the other thing about this, it's also community building. So um, we probably will be doing a relationship with, uh, well, we already have a relationship with Spirit Farm and working with the projects out in Gallup, but um, there may be an opportunity for a trip to Spirit Farm that folks would be invited to carpool out to um, at some point. And then we may have a fall kind of workshop to continue this relationship and build because they really believe as we do, that you can't just have events and one sort of one-time things, but we need to be growing community and we are moving into challenging times. And so we, um, you know, find joy in doing these things together and also it empowers our spirits. So those are just a few of those things that are happening. And then uh, the last of the three prongs, um, the first was education inspiration. Second is hands-on. And then the third is public policy advocacy that IPL works on, and a number of you have, have been engaged in that. We have a policy advocacy um, committee that meets the um, first Wednesday. Uh, the first Wednesday of each month at noon. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> We've been a little askew lately because of the legislative session, but we work on some of the um, agenda of national um, IPL that we work with. Like we've been working on the methane rules, as I mentioned. Um, we participated in the soot rule that the EPA um, is ending those comment periods in just a few days. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act, we will be working on the farm bill with Bread for the World this year. So more will be coming out about that. We have worked, some of these bills, it sounds like it's a lot, but some of these take forever to, to happen. Like the EPA methane rules took years. Um, Recovering America's Wildlife Act, we've been working on that for three years or so. So periodically there'll be an ask, but they're all kind of just keep going along. Um, clean cars. Um, we have worked on the Mining Reform Act of 1872, which has not been reformed since 1872. Um, and then here locally, one that's federal that I think um, if folks are interested, we're going to start working with one of our um, uh, folks up in uh, Reverend Andrew Black, who is Presbyterian in Santa Fe, works with the Wilderness Alliance. And he and those folks have been working on the Caja del Rio Federation, uh, federal, it's to get that wilderness area federally protected. It's south of uh, Santa Fe. 
And if folks would be interested, we'd be happy to help sponsor with him um, uh, um, an outdoor little hike through that area, which is filled with uh, immense diversity of um, you know, creatures and uh, land uh, plants and things. It's also a very sacred area to our Pueblos in that region. So um, as for New Mexico, I know some of you have been following the legislative session. Some of you have helped out a great deal with the legislative session and advocate, advocating. And in terms of some social programs, it, it was really a good session. In terms of climate and certain areas, it is was not as hopeful, let's just say. Um, and um, I don't know if you want to hear the list of things that didn't pass, <laughs> <laughs> sort of died on the vine. I'll just give you a few of them. A Clean Futures Act, which was a climate change bill, did not make it. Um, economic Transition Division, and funding so that we could move into uh, new economic diversity um, did not make it, although there may be, I'm not sure, some funding that was put out, for, but the bill, HB 188, did not make it. Um, public Health and Climate Resiliency, all, HB 42 and SB 5 also died. The Climate Investment Bank, SB 169, did not make it. Um, we're working heavily on uh, uh, reform for the New Mexico Oil and Gas um, Act, SB 418, and, and we didn't expect that it would make it through, and it didn't. This really, that act has not been really um, changed. There's been a few little tweaks to it, but not changed since 1935. And so part of that would be addressing setbacks, how close facilities can be to homes, schools, et cetera, and also um, looking at uh, needing to really raise the funds that are needed um, for um, cleanup afterwards, especially with oil and gas facilities that are orphaned or abandoned. And the price is extremely expensive and we don't have the money and taxpayers should not be left with that, holding that. Um, there was also a Low Income Utility Act, HB 218, that didn't make it. Environmental standards for appliances and fixtures didn't quite make it. A bill for plastics that didn't make it. The Green Amendment. I hate to be such a downer on this, but there are several things that did. So we worked heavily on the budget, HB2, and there are some things in that that will help our environment. Um, also, um, we worked to um, try to halt the Holtec, which is a, a project for taking all the nuclear waste from spent nuclear fuel rods from all the nuclear power plants in the entire country and putting it in Southeast New Mexico. And that was halted. And actually, we'll see what happens next because that's under the jurisdiction of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. But all of the agencies, the governor and all of the federal delegation, um, as well as many over 65% up to 70% of the people in the state do not want that. Um, there's cleanup for San Juan generating power plant. Some of the water bills uh, made it through the Regional Water uh, Resiliency Act, a water security planning. Um, so there's a few other things as well. So just, um, just a brief rundown. So that's some of the state things that we've been working on and a number of other people have been as well. Um, and there'll be other things as we go along during the year here. But I wanted to just open it up to any questions that you might have or any suggestions of things that you think might be um, helpful in growing our community here in New Mexico, El Paso, and um, that would be um, ideas that you have for good to do. Joan, uh, this is Dodi. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't think I was going to be able to attend, so I didn't ask for your okay on this, but I did want to just comment that uh, we had a meeting, a first time, first time ever meeting of what I'm calling the Interfaith Green Team, for lack of a, a better name uh, at this point. And we did have a meeting, and uh, we had five various faith communities represented. And uh, it was a wonderful meeting, very exciting to see what all the different places 
are, are doing, there was the great exchange, you know, oh, well, how'd you do that? And it was, it was very, very exciting. And um, what we decided that when we have our individual programs at our various churches or synagogues or wherever, uh, <clears throat> that um, we don't get a very good attendance. We get our green team and, you know, five, eight, 10 uh, of our congregants. And uh, so we decided that we would band together for some sort of an educational program. And at this point, although we haven't agreed on it totally, I think what we're going to do mm -hmm. is show the new IPL film, uh, Current Revolution. And uh, it, it looks wonderful. I previewed it and it's, it's very professional. I mean, I was very impressed with it. And the rest of the, uh, the teams, uh, the team will be looking at it. And uh, we're going to have an interfaith um, activity on June 4th. And as I said, right now, there are five. And, and if I may, I would like to invite any of you who have any interest in joining this, because it's, it's quite exciting to have all of our, our various faith um, communities together and uh, that perhaps it's something we might do, you know, quarterly or whatever. But uh, uh, anyway, I'm going to put my name in uh, the chat box and my uh, email. And if any of you uh, are interested on behalf of your, you know, church or faith community, I would love to uh, include you and, uh, you know, we'll work together. But I'm sorry I didn't get ahead you know, ask you about that ahead of time. No, this is great, Dodie. And yeah, I was I was told about this. I think it's marvelous. And the film that Dodie's talking about, uh, Current Revolution, is one that the IPL, we have a week of faith and climate action, which is really two weeks, the end of April for Earth Day. And IPL has resources. And actually, I purchased through IPL that anyone is welcome to have um, two uh, hard copies of this uh, video. So if anybody wants to borrow them, just uh, let us know. And so I do. <laughs> I, wanted, and, I just needed to get the, I wanted to wait until the legislature was over because not to bother you, but I'll get those in, in our, our the whole committee, our team, as I'm calling them, the green team, the interfaith green team will all view it and then, you know, have lots of publicity and that sort of thing. But right. I'd love to have any of you with your various faith communities join us. You know, I think it's it's the way to go. All yeah. Thank you. That's that's great, Dodi. And just so you know, um, the Holy Cross Retreat Center down in Las Cruces is going to be showing that film. Odile has been working with some uh, congregations in El Paso area to show a film which is excellent, excellent on uh, immigration and um, climate. And it's called The Letter. And it's about Pope Francis, but it's not really about Pope Francis. It's about him inviting some people in different countries, and none of them are Catholic. Um, some of them are agnostic, and they're all different cultures, ages, uh, young people. And he sends them a letter and says, I want you to come to the Vatican to visit with me about what's happening in your country with climate change. And the film I just love, it's refreshing. Uh, the, uh, the one uh, young girl from India who is um, Hindu said, who, what is the Pope? <laughs> I loved it. So anyway, it, and it's a very, very powerful, very powerful film as well. So that is online. That's another resource. So just so you know, there's the, different resources. The name of the film, please. The Letter. The L Letter. L-E-T-T-E-R, okay. The Letter. And if you Google it, you'll just find it online. And it, it would be, it's in... It'd be, it's long, but it'd be great to break it up. Um, and Odile has worked on that to break it up. So um, Odile, maybe in your, um, in the chat, put your email. Yeah, sure, sure. Folks are interested in knowing maybe how to present that in a way for discussion. Odile can help you with that. And the other, the other documentary film that you mentioned that you have the hard copy of, I didn't get it written down. Current Revolution. And that's an IPL uh, film. And on the National IPL website, um, there are resources for the week of faith and climate action as well. So, um, and we also, if you click on the New Mexico map, if you're having an activity that we aren't aware of and don't have on there yet, you can put your activity on the map there. So that would be fun too. 
Um, you know, I know we wanted to keep this to an hour. Um, does anybody have other comments or suggestions or thoughts or is this a good idea to have these quarterly ones? This is a little longer tonight in some ways because it's just kind of a rundown of what's happening um, right now, but uh, just an overview for people that may not be aware. But we could cover any kind of a topic or it's it's totally open plus a, just an overview of what's happening with IPL. So we'll do these um, seasonally. So the equinoxes and the summer solstice and the winter solstice time. So it'll be in those months, March, June, um, September, and early December before we get into the um, more the holiday times. Any other thoughts or comments? Otherwise, if you would still like, I will share this Joanna Macy video to close us off tonight. Okay, let me let me find that. Okay, and it's so grateful you all came. So let me find Joanne here. Okay. There's a colossal anguish. Everything from oil spills to nuclear waste. And it's not an individual matter. But we, as a planet people, are sick in our soul. We have pathologized pain. We have made it a wrong thing. We have made it like a mistake uh, rather than acknowledging that this is we need pain to alert us for what needs attention. And we have been treating it as some kind of uh, enemy to our cheerfulness. I began so in this as I was exploring how personally to befriend this pain because I knew it was speaking some truth, as is indeed in Buddhism the first noble truth. The first noble truth that the Lord Buddha taught is dukkha, suffering. There is suffering. And if you want to get anywhere, honey, if you want to grow up, <laughs> if you want to <laughs> open to life, if you want to be enlightened, whatever, however you describe the state you're after, then you have to face that and see there is suffering. And there were lines from my childhood in the church, the Christian church, you know, blessed are they that mourn. And that would come up and sound. And so what happens for people as they get real about their true feelings, when they tell the truth, about what they see and feel and know is happening to our world. Something so beautiful and so freeing happens. It's a jewel. It's like something Tiffany would like to recreate. And oh, so lovely. Like us. <laughs> I mean, like us, just like dew on the grass. Pain opens the heart and the eyes so you can see the beauty. So much grief. But the thing is, it's carried by just about everybody. It's a great, uh, like, public secret that you go on with this ache inside them for what's happening to our world. And they think they're alone in it. You don't speak it. This allows the world to become more vivid. It's like that poem of Mary Oliver, where she says, you tell me your despair and I'll tell you mine. And this allows the world to become more vivid, seeing the wild geese, seeing this incredible planet that we're in with all the life that's around us. Because we had the courage 
the strength to speak of our despair. But precisely because we speak it, we don't stay there. Because that despair is the covering of our love for our world, and we crack it open by speaking it so the love can uh, act, uh, be felt. So the key is in not being afraid of our pain for the world, not being afraid of the world's suffering. And if you're not afraid of, of it, then nothing can stop you. So thank you all so much for this evening and nothing can stop us and we carry love and infuse love in all this work that we're doing and growing larger community together as we face our realities. So thank you again very much. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for starting us off. Just wonderful. Thank you.